Mr. Pahor, you held all the highest political uh, positions in the country. Without a doubt, you led quite a stressful life. Uh, and you are known for your love of running. Would you say that um, being active helped you with your professional career also as a politician? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I, I could not imagine my life w without the sport. Mm. And what do you admire most in professional athletes? Uh, I would like uh, to say that I have a couple of sports, but I would go with the uh, cyclists. Mm, okay, great. Uh, the conversation now will be led uh, by Anna Ivanovic from the Novak Djokovic Foundation. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you on the behalf of the whole team of Novak Djokovic Foundation and uh, our founders, Novak and Jelena Djokovic. Uh, we are very happy and proud to be part of uh, such amazing event as this one and uh, to announce a partnership with Tennis Slovenia uh, and our strategic program for parents in sport called the Path of a Champion. Uh, Novak Djokovic Foundation uh, is uh, dedicated uh, to invest in early childhood education uh, through different programs for parents and caregivers, as well as the projects of infrastructure. Uh, we provide the support uh, and uh, try to bring the positive change uh, into most important part of uh, childhood, which is early years. Uh, before we uh, talk more on the topic of parents in sport, uh, maybe the best way to understand the values and the goals uh, specifically of the program for parents in sport uh, is to see uh, the video uh, that uh, we are going to share with you now. So please enjoy and we will go back to the conversation afterwards. Ti kao roditelj ne možeš da odlučiš da je tvoje dete talena, da će tvoje dete biti najbolje na svet u nečem. Sport nije vrhunski sport. Sport nije novac. Sport nije budućnost materijalne prirode. Vrhunski sport nije samo profesionalni sport. To je nešto što treba da stvara ličnosti, da stvara ljudi. Među uspeha i neuspeha uvek pobeđuje neuspeh. Uspeh je pre svega zavisan od interesovanja, sistematskog i kvalitetnog rada. Niko nema pravo da osudi dete da li će biti ili neće biti. Biće sigurno šampion. Čim je došao do trenera, biće sigurno disciplinovan. Ako to dete nije talenat u ovom poslu, u ovom sportu, bit će u nečem drugom. Ali si ti tu da mu kao roditelj ukažeš prave put. Roditelj treba da bude roditelj, a da ostavi sve ostalo nastavniku, profesoru, to je streneru. Nerealnost u roditeljima se dolazi do toga da se deca uništavaju, da se uništavaju odnosi u porodici i da od toga nema ništa. Pravi trener, pre svega imam dobar odnos sa roditeljima. Mnogo bolji nego sa svojim sportistom. Taj nastavnik, profesor, odnosno trener, učestvuje u vaspitanju i odrastanju tog deteta. Roditelji, nemojte da se plašite, nije to ništa strašno, samo morate da budete svesni da je vaše angažovanje i vaše prisustvo uz vaše dete strahovito važno, da bi on na kraju postao veliki šampion. Thank you. Uh, when we talk about the, the role of parents, uh, Dr. Perko, uh, how do you see the, their role, most of all, and uh, finding balance and building the confidence uh, in this sensitive early years, considering the sport environment and ambitions? 
What we saw here, it's 100% true, but what I see on the field, it's a big gap between what they are talking and doing. And I think uh, this is, for parents, it's really uh, easy but not simple. They must just love their kids. Every child needs confirmation that he's good, he's doing things good, that he's doing right thing, that he's worth being as he is. And it's not uh, simple because we have Slovenian mentality and elite sport environment. And in Slovenia, we definitely love our children, but somehow we have problems to show them or express this love. And then they became diligent. And they think if they will work harder, <coughs> they will get loved. And if this is motivation, push to go to sport, it's probably uh, not really the best reason. And then in elite sport, Children offer are confronted uh, with impossible task to meet or achieve goals of adults, important adults. And these goals are uh, often unrealistic, even crazy sometimes. And because they cannot achieve them, they start to doubt themselves. Uh, they have feelings of inferiority and also they have a lot of feelings of shame. And they start to, they became diligent, they start to overcompensate because they think if uh, I will work a lot, uh, I will get love. And they start to be perfectionist and um, they are not satisfied with whatever they achieved. And uh, although objectively results are really good, and this go hand in hand with states of depression, anxiety, alcohol, uh, consumption, uh, burnout, and so on. And the most problematic is because uh, it's phenomena called uh, repetitive com uh, compulsion, first described by Freud. And that's mean that athlete, when he can never reach the goals of important adults, he internalizes that he's not good enough. And then when he's in the verge of achieve victory, uh, he do what he knows the best, repeat the script. Uh, he make mistake, he get injured and prove to himself that he's just or and important others, adults, that he's not good enough. And this is quite a big wound for Slovenians, not only athletes, also in other fields. So I think parents really must just love their kids as they are. Having that in mind, uh Katarina and Rasho, when we go back in time, uh, you as a high-level athletes, uh, can you share with us what was the approach of your parents? And uh, considering that only recently uh, it became a topic, the ambition and pressure in the childhood uh, sports. So can you make, be, uh, make the comparison uh, to what you see today and how you were brought up? Um, <clears throat> I think the biggest difference between today and uh, our times is uh, social media. Before, because uh, we didn't know about no stats, no money, no uh, success. We all, all we saw on TV was maybe ex-Yugoslavia national team and some teams that were playing in Europe. I speak for basketball. You know, today kids know everything about every player. How much they score, how much they earn, how much they spend, everything. And I think that's not good for the kids. Not just for the athlete, but also for the regular kids. And uh, I have five kids and I try to keep them away from that. And uh, I remember when I was young, uh, we, we, we would make a deal where to meet on Monday, where to meet on Friday to go to the game or to, to go to the practice. And today you everything to is here word. in a minute, you know. <laughs> And uh, uh, I, I think we had a, a, a also big luck for me that uh, our coaches was old-fashioned coaches. So this was like pretty tough coaching. Uh, discipline was number one everywhere. Today, I think I, what I see with my kids, there's a, a big lack of discipline and respect uh, towards the teammates and towards the, uh, the, the, the coaches. You know, and um, I just hope it's going to come back to that, uh, not especially old school like we had, but in that way that uh, if for success in sports, you have to know the, uh, and you have to have the pyramid, who is the boss and then everything under that. Without that, uh, very difficult that we're going to have success. 
Katarina. Yeah, just to top up, I mean, I agree with uh, what Russell said, but uh, just to say regarding, uh, for example, tennis is uh, individual sport, so the approach is a little bit different than basketball. Uh, so a lot, of course, uh, is, is lying on the parents uh, at uh, the young age. So, um, but for me, from my personal experience, I'm really lucky and fortunate that um, my parents basically did all the right things um, without any prior knowledge, without any guidelines, because back then, all the knowledge and the tools that are available nowadays for the parents to use to help their kids, they weren't available then. So my parents kind of just did it all naturally, uh, by instinct, and that was, uh, for, for most, uh, was, was the, the, the biggest and important thing was to not put any pressure on me. I never once uh, felt any pressure, whether I, I had to win a match or a tournament or even a pressure that they uh, sacrificed a lot for me to, to be able to play tennis um, and basically live my dream. And um, beside that, they were also then supporting me, making sure I was attending practices, uh, but they weren't present at every practice. Um, they weren't really involved um, all the time that I had the freedom uh, going uh, by myself even sometimes to practice and I, I felt that freedom and independence and that helped me to grow as a person and as a player later as well. Uh, it's important that parents are not um, constantly there observing every move of, of their kids and trying to advise them and let that be the advice from the coaches. Um, and yeah, so my parents basically gave me that and of course they provided as well motivation and support and uh, for me personally important was the comfort. You know, when you didn't win, you played bad, um, you know, you cry sometimes of course as uh, you know, we all do and especially kids, it's important that you get that comfort from parents and not that you see the disappointment or any frustration when things didn't go well. Uh, so they were in, in that sense, I, I couldn't have chosen better parents like that and I was because of all of this able to really play free without any pressure and just enjoy tennis from day one to, to pretty much the last day which was a very long career. So you got all the support that you needed. Um, what do you suggest, uh, doctor, uh, that the best way would be uh, for parents to communicate with kids today when it comes to sports and uh, winning and losing? Uh, we know a lot about uh, this, but uh, I think it's important that they support them. But it's fine line, thin line between supporting and pushing. And we see often that they start to push and they push too much. And uh, I think it's also important that they respect the trainer and that they do not get involved unless if they're told to do so. But we really have the other part, the more dark side, because many, many athletes report that um, they start to doing sport because that was escape for them, escape for, from uh, difficult family situations like alcoholism, tyranny, emotional abuse and so on. And it is crucial, actually no one talk about that. It's there but it's not. And it's crucial that trainers, coaches recognize those kids, those teenagers and enable them that sport is safe heaven for them where parents cannot go. So the motive why uh, they start with the sport is uh, very important uh, yes. as a part of, uh, of that, um, uh, what you said. Uh, Rasho, for you and as well as uh, Katarina, you were playing, uh, you had a career on the highest level. Uh, how did you find the balance uh, because we hear a lot of talk about balance, healthy mind, body, uh, all together. So what was your way uh, to keep the balance between your personal life, professional life and health uh, all together? I mean, it's, it just comes with a, your career progressing, you know, and you get used to it, you know, from uh, uh, younger generations and then go through first team here, Europe, uh, America. Um, I think every athlete, especially these big ones, like uh, top 
at least they know what they have to do. You know, it's just business. And once you get into that, it's same like everybody else's uh, job. You know, you don't think about it. You know what you have to do when you go have, you have to go to rest when you have, have what and when you have to eat. You know, and once you get into that uh, uh, rhythm, it's it's easier from year to year. And uh, older you are, I think it's much easier to control that and uh, and to have balance between your personal life and uh, professional life. Um, yeah, the, basically to get that balance, is uh, you have to listen to um, yourself, listen to the body and, and your mind as well, what you need, uh, what it feels um, in that moment. And I kind of learned this uh, the hard way along the way, made some mistakes, and then I realized, uh, for example, because tennis is a specific sport, it, it, the season is about, uh, when I played, about 11 months, so it was important to... Um, listen to the body whenever, for example, if there was practice um, uh, and I felt some muscle injury, I realized that less practice is actually more. Um, and, uh, for example, I would stop practice and um, rest that day, take a day off the following day, and I was good to go the next day. Whereas in the past, because uh, I'm stubborn a little bit and perfectionist, and, and I would feel a pain, and I think uh, during that practice, let's say, as I'm using as an example, um, and I wanted to make sure I finished the practice, so I pushed through the pain, and just to get that tick, and I, you know, was happy, all right, but on the long term, the next two, three, four days, even maybe a week, I made uh, more harm. I had to, I had an injury because I pushed through the pain, so this was something, it's not a technique, but it's just something like a guideline I try to focus on, uh, to make sure that uh, my body was fit, that I was able to last week in and week out throughout the whole year. Um, and regarding the mindset, uh, it was kind of the same thing. It was important to find the balance when the tennis or the match or practice was finished. Uh, I went uh, back to the hotel and I forgot about tennis, you know, to not think about tennis non-stop, not think about the match next day. Um, and everybody needs to find that happy place, whatever it is, whether, you know, you go shopping, you go see a movie, uh, hang out with friends, go for dinner, but just take your mind off your sport, do something else and re-energize and then uh, that, that for me worked really well, uh, a good balance, uh, you know, to take care of both body and mind. So, but so you learned kind of in a way what is your, you have to find it yourself, right? Of course, like I said, the, the yeah. first time I made mistakes, I was injured, mm -hmm. and then with experience, then you get to know how to, to listen and uh, listen to the symptoms and the, the body. So there, there is no shortcut. <laughs> no, I, unfortunately, no, no recipe. <laughs> uh, Mr. Pohor, um, can you share with us some techniques of how sport helped you and uh, how uh, it improved your professional life and your mindset in general uh, in uh, your career and in your life? Well, first of all, sport has been always there from the beginning. Uh, as a child, I, I've just left sport and was my uh, space of, you know, uh, uh, joy. But then uh, uh, it's became much more than that. Uh, it's became a tool of uh, reflection and also of uh, inspiration. I've just, uh, you know, uh, found it out that uh, through gym or through uh, run or swimming, uh, I can think uh, politics differently. Uh, and uh, sometimes, just sometimes, some excellent ideas, uh, you know, came through. Uh, doing sport, not thinking about politics in, in very uh, you know, narrow uh, meaning of the word. So uh, I, I have to be, uh, you know, thankful to the sport for many things. Uh, but always uh, it is uh, that uh, it goes also with, 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 the, uh, with to be fit, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. So uh, uh, I like the sports. Uh, uh, I enjoy it. Uh, it's a space of uh, reflection and inspiration. And uh, as I said before, I cannot imagine my life without it. Uh, was it uh, like scheduled thing, oh, or yes, was it, it, it after it, stressful yeah, I, day? No, especially? always it is. It is mm -hmm. always uh, as prime minister or president. Whenever we would go, you know, uh, 
uh, through the world uh, for official or unofficial visits always has been there a spare time for my recreation uh, always. You know, uh, as president or prime minister, when you are going uh, around, you have a couple of hours for whatever you would like to do. And I've always chosen the sport. So, you know, uh, I've been well known, uh, you know, uh, in the world that uh, everywhere we came, the best, the, the, the most fitted uh, uh, security uh, guys uh, <laughs> had to be there to, to uh, go with me. And we've, uh, basically, we've gone through every city uh, running through and uh, we enjoyed so very much. That's amazing. Rasho, before we uh, got on the stage, we were talking a little bit about uh, uh, the, the role of parents and uh, you mentioned that your son, Nicola, is also uh, an athlete now, basketball player. How do you see future star, maybe? Uh, how do you see his development and do you already start to feel um, like um, ambition rising? <laughs> Personally, I didn't, I didn't want to push him into basketball because uh, um, um, what I saw till I was nine years almost in federation, so I saw the biggest problems are parents usually because uh, kids 13, 14 years old, they, they even don't know the rules of basketball and parents already thinking about uh, their careers. And that's when I mentioned social media, it's only connected with the success and money, you know. And uh, uh, I don't want to be the parent that, that is going to be more ambitious than my kid. I want to be a support for him, but I'm not going to be the one who is going to push him. You know, I want to leave all my kids choose their own destiny. And if they're going to need help, I'm going to help them. I'm definitely not going to uh, uh, do some protection and, uh, because I know some people, because I'm not going to do them favor, but I'm going to do them bad thing. You know, if I, I was always uh, um, the... I, I believed in, in TIG that you have to prove yourself to be good, you know. Uh, somebody can push you, but sooner or later you're gonna, it's gonna show up that it's failure, you know. And for all my kids, I always uh, explain to them uh, that I'm gonna help them, but I'm not gonna push them. They're gonna have to do it by themselves. So if they don't wanna go for practice, uh, I try to explain to them it's not because of me, you practice because of yourself. That's what I did, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I just hope that uh, uh, they're gonna succeed what they like, although statistics show a uh, very small percentage of the kids that really believe gonna play in NBA or they're gonna win a Grand Slam or whatever, is, uh, that percentage is very slow. And I just hope for all the kids to be healthy and to let them develop by themselves. Don't push them. Don't, uh, don't try to uh, bring some of your failures when you were young and you didn't succeed and make some big success, now you want to make that success through, through your kids and push them because uh, it's really hard, especially in these days, to push on a 20, 12, 13 year old kid to put on their shoulders uh, existence of the family, existence of the future for the family. You know, that's some things that we didn't have. That's why I mentioned before, you know, we didn't know about MBA. When we were dreaming about where you want to play, our only dream in Ljubljana was to play in Olympia, you know. That's all we knew. Today, they know everything about all the world, you know. So, uh, I, I, my advice to all the parents that have kids is just let them develop, you know. Because kids, uh, my experience is kids going to make, make it work on the court. But if parents come in between, it's going to break up immediately, you know. Kids find a way to make it work, so... Let them make the works. Not all of them going to be uh, Novak Djokovic or Luka Doncic or whoever, but uh, we don't need all of them to be. You know, sport is not just the top players and top. Sport is a lot more of, uh, on the background. So maybe one day they're going to be somebody from the office or some big sponsor or something that is going to help the, the, the sport. Uh, Dr. Perko, I don't think we have uh, much more time, but maybe for the, uh, for the end, uh, you can share with us maybe some specific uh, uh, tricks and mantras <laughs> that uh, athletes can use because the confidence and the self-doubt is the big topic, not only in the sports world, but mostly now in business as well, because it became pretty similar, business and professional sport. Uh, so maybe to overcome this crisis, uh, 
What is the best way? Just some mantras and affirmation won't do the job. It's too simple. Okay, one example, it is when we're turning uh, negative sentences into positive ones, but actually they're just a part of a bigger, uh, more complex technique of, of a positive self-speech. And it is necessary to athletes or, I don't know, also people who are in business world to learn those techniques like visualization, like relaxation techniques, uh, like goal-setting diary and so on. And this can be quite easily uh, learned with the help of sports psychologists. And in Slovenia, we have quite few of them and very good ones. So, and this definitely will do the work. <laughs> Okay, so we have some trick, <laughs> some shortcuts. Um, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. It was a pleasure to, to be here. Uh, hopefully, we will see you soon when we start our uh, journey together with Tennis Slovenia. And uh, thank you once again.